What's going on everybody? Today we have another trade to discuss, the Tyler Toffoli trade to Vancouver. What effect will he have on the Canucks and did they give up too much? Let's get right into it. And the trade goes as follows. The Vancouver Canucks acquired Tyler Toffoli in exchange for Tim Challer, a second round pick in 2020, a conditional fourth round pick in 2022 and the most important part of the deal I think, the rights to Tyler Madden. Now giving up Tyler Madden is a really interesting part of the deal for me because he's putting up great numbers in the NCAA and he's someone you would think you would want to keep on your team in your organization. But when you give up a prospect of this caliber, you're really showing that you want to go for the cup, you want to go for a playoff run at least, which is really, really interesting and bold by the Canucks. And like we've seen with recent trades, you have to give up a prospect for a top 6 forward, like the Penguins did with Jason Zucker when they gave up Keelan Addison. And if Kreider gets traded, I think we're gonna see a prospect in that deal as well. But what I think really made the Canucks go for this trade is two reasons. Obviously, they want to make the playoffs and have a deep run in the playoffs. And also because Brock Besser will be out for eight weeks. So this will replace him and hopefully his production as well. Can he do it? Maybe. He's been pretty good this season and he's shown in the past that he can score 30 goals. And if he gets top six minutes, then he will certainly have an impact. I'm not saying he's gonna go on and score 15 or 20 goals in these remaining what 20 games but playing in the top six and on the power play he can definitely have a big impact i think something that kind of bothers me though is that the canucks still don't have a real like enforcer it's a boring argument and it's an old school argument and i don't really like it but the canucks need someone to stand up for Pedersen and their other young players if they make the playoffs because they will be targeted in the playoffs Tyler Myers stood up for Pedersen recently against the Anaheim Ducks and got into a fight, which is good. But I'd like to see a forward too, especially with Ferland being out for the season, which is so unfortunate. And I really hope he makes a full recovery. I've heard people talk about Wayne Simmons, but his cap hit is really high, even though his contract runs out this summer. But I don't think it has to be a really big key player, top 6 or top 9 for it could be like just a goon, an enforcer that just goes out there and gets into the opponent's face and shows that hey, you can't touch our key players, you can't touch Patterson, you can't touch Hughes, you can't touch Besser, and if you do, you have to answer the bell. And obviously, it could have bad implications as well. You could have more power plays against you, for example, but you don't have to give him 10 minutes per game. You can give him 5 minutes where he goes out, makes a couple of hits, gets into the opponent's face, and then gets off the ice. And plays like these can also draw penalties because of the way they play. Another important part of this trade is if they will be able to keep the Foley in Vancouver. He's a UFA this summer and you'd think they want to keep him considering the price they give up for him, but they'll have to clear up some cap space and I'm looking at you, Lou Erickson, but honestly, I think that contract is too much of an albatross and moving that contract will be so hard and I just think they have to live with it for the rest of the deal, which is two more years. And they also need to start planning for the future when they have to sign Pedersen and Hughes and Markstrom is on his final year of his deal and he'll want to race with the way he's been playing this year. So this is a good deal for the Canucks now and they'll be a better team this season but I obviously think they need to re-sign to fully this summer to get the full value of this trade. On the other hand for the Kings this is a great deal. You get to add another really good name to your already incredible prospect pool and you get a second round pick which you never know could end up being something good. And last night we saw reports of the Kings shopping Alec Martinez and that could net you a nice return. We saw reports of it being two second round picks so we'll see what happens there but that would be a great deal I think. So even if it's looking bleak for the Kings now this season the future is very bright. But the Canucks, they're really gambling on themselves here and they think they're good enough to make the playoffs this year and for years to come and have deep runs at that. And it's important to note that they don't have their first or second round pick this year. And yes, a worst case scenario, if the Canucks don't make the playoffs this year, the first round that they traded to Tampa for JT Miller will be moved to the 2021 draft. But the Canucks are moving like a team that is primed for a playoff run and it will be very interesting to see how it goes. So that's my take on the trade. I think it's a good trade and I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. So comment what you think about the trade. And I thank so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.